Hey everyone, I'm Mike Holmes Jr. And for those of you who don't know me, I've been working for my dad for too many years now, but on the shows like Homes on Homes, Homes Makes It Right, Homes Inspections. Uh, if you've seen any of those shows, you've probably seen me working in the background. Thanks for joining us today. Today, I'll be talking with Tony Diacentis. Hi, my name is Tony Diacentis, and I'm CEO and co-founder of a technology company called Ving. We specialize in modern microburst training for your safety, quality, and standard operating procedure needs while folks are out on the job site getting the job done. Thanks, Michael. Glad to be here with you today to talk about safety on the job site. It's uh, really our passion around here, and that's why we got into this business. Uh, about eight years ago, my partner and co-founder, Stephanie Hunter, and I really kind of zeroed in on this problem that uh, you know so many people have with working with the decentralized workforce, those folks out in the field with the mud on their boots, getting the job done every day. And yeah arms way, right? You know, so it's about getting them the right information at the right time to keep them safe on the job. Absolutely. I mean, I've seen, uh, I've been on the job site and I've seen some terrible things happen to people. I was on the job site once and I'll never forget this. This was early on in my construction career and a plumber had come to turn the water or try and fix the water main. And what happened is it had frozen. So he had taken a look over the water main. And just as he did that, a piece of ice shot out and he lost his eye. So it was, you know, just giving people a little bit more information on safety, on the do's and don'ts of the job site is so important. It's critical, you know, and in a situation like that, obviously it's a nanosecond, right? And this is probably an experienced person that absolutely knew the, the, the value of eye protection, but you yeah. get busy and we have deadlines to hit on project sites and all of a sudden it's just a quick movement and bam, something goes wrong. And, you know, so many times safety training is this event based training where, you know, you go to a class or you do something online and then in theory, you're good to go for a period of time. Well, yeah. it only takes a second on the job site to, to let your guard down and something can go wrong. So what I'd like to do is show a quick video that explains the Ving platform at a very high level. Your employees need accurate information to deliver quality work efficiently and without injury. How good are you at sharing the right information at the right time with them? Rank yourself 1 terrible, 10 awesome. Now ask, did they get, read, watch, listen, and understand? Don't like your numbers? Introducing Ving, a learning experience platform that's perfect for modern day microburst information sharing. Short videos, minimal text, and relevant material. We'll help get your organization to a 10. Contact us today. Like you said, I mean, I've done plenty of different courses, safety courses, first aid. And so many times I think to myself, man, I wish I remembered that certain thing. Like what, what did they exactly say about this point in here? Because like you said, it's a full day course or whatever it might be. And you tend to not remember every single point of that uh, safety course. Michael, there's research that shows that when people are sitting in a room and they're going through their training, they obviously are unengaged learners at some point, you know, raise your hand if you're guilty, right? You know, you yeah. daydream. You got people on the job site, they're thinking about going to have a beer with their buddies. They're thinking about getting home for a soccer game. They're thinking about all of this stuff. And research shows that your rate of forgetfulness just skyrockets at post training event within 24 hours, one week, and up to 90% after 30 days. It's just crazy. So it's all about how to keep little nuggets of information. We call them microbursts and get them in right. the, hands of the right people at the right time for the right task at hand. Um, here's an example of a microburst that's going to help somebody to inspect their ladder or set up their ladder. The next step in using ladders safely is to inspect the ladder. Look for loose or worn rungs. Check the rails for cracks or corrosion. Make sure they are straight, not bowed or dented. Look for any loose or missing hardware such as screws, bolts, or hinges. Check the rope on extension ladders. If it's frayed or damaged, don't use it. Also, make sure the extension locks are working correctly.
check the feet of the ladder and replace any worn or damaged feet or pads. On step ladders, make sure the spreaders are in good condition and lock securely. A step ladder should not wobble on a flat surface. Replace any damaged or missing labels and tag any damaged or defective ladder. Take it out of use immediately. And never paint a wooden ladder. Paint may hide defects. Yeah, it's a great video because uh, so many people actually don't know the proper things to look for on a damaged ladder. And you know, even myself, uh, years ago, I remember setting up a ladder to go on a roof. And uh, it was only about a story up. It was a bungalow, lucky enough. And lucky enough, there was also a bin not too far behind the ladder, but I started climbing up. And what happened was the pads were worn out on the bottom. So there was actually no grip. And I yep. didn't have someone holding the ladder for me, which you should also do as well. Um, but as I got almost to the top, the ladder started sliding out from under me. And luckily, it stopped on the bin. And I didn't get hurt. But it, it's one of those lessons that I was very lucky to learn, not the hard way, but it was enough to scare me into making sure that I check my ladders before I set it up to go on a roof. Yeah, it's literally the one of the number one issues people have when working at home. We hear of so many ladder injuries uh, and working a job site. So, you know, uh, some of my word choice has really been focused about the job site, the job site today so far. But the reality of it is, I, just think about how many people run out to that garage, grab that extension ladder, put it upside, climb up it, empty the gutters of the leaves. Yeah. No inspection takes place at all. And, uh, you know, if it's an ancient wooden ladder from your grandpa's garage or whatever it is, <laughs> now you've got some really serious inspection mishaps if you didn't take a quick look at it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I find oftentimes that, you know, some homeowners do tend to have those like ancient tools that they still use, whether that's a ladder or a step ladder or right. even a bucket that they stand on. And, you know, that's exactly how someone gets hurt. Absolutely. A while back, there was someone who worked for us and his wife was trying to fix their garage door and it actually turned into a uh, horrific accident. Uh, there's a video of my dad talking about it here. So why don't we play that now? A friend of mine, his wife, one of my contractors, his wife thought she could increase the tension on the door herself. And you know that big thing at the top that looks like it's, it's actually the tension roll. She would put the two bars in herself, push it up, put in the second bar, pull this one out, push it up. All by herself she did this. Carlito should have done it herself, himself. What happened is, is when she pushed up like this, she slipped on the next oh. one and wasn't holding this one good enough. It came down and smashed all her teeth out. It was a oh. terrible accident, absolutely terrible. Pay attention to that. Always have a professional. Cr increase your tension or reduce it. Don't do things that we don't know. That's such a good point. I mean, sticking to things that we know. Hire the right people for the right jobs. Because I mean, I remember Carlito telling me about that and it knocked his wife out. She lost her teeth. She was in the hospital after that. And just by trying to fix something that, you know, you're not totally aware of how to do it. It's oftentimes these simple, quick projects where people find themselves in trouble. And if you haven't had success or experience in doing something that looks a little foreign, like a garage door, if that just with that spring and all of that, uh, there's a lot going on there, right? With uh, case in point to the video. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, um, we do have a program called Homes Approved Homes where we partner up with the best builders across North America. These are award winning builders who build above minimum code and they're energy efficient homes. We're really proud of what they build. And I want to know, how do you see this Ving Toolkit improving their process and efficiencies? Yeah, so uh, really there's two components to the uh, Ving platform. So there's the part that the employee sees, and then there's the part that the company or the contractor can see to manage their way through all of their training and compliance. So of okay. course, we always start with the employee and driving engagement up, and the microburst is a mobile platform, easy to use. Um, we always say, you know, when, when you're out on the job site and you're busy doing all kinds of stuff, one, doesn't you don't want it to take a lot of time to do the training, but you also want to take away all the barriers. So the company can benefit by increasing engagement and making it easy to engage with the training. No plugin, no sign on, no download, no password. Just literally receive it as a text message on your phone or an email in your inbox or even scan a QR code at the job site. 
And from the time that anybody, uh, there's a good example of a job site poster. We all have seen these before. Uh, we, our platform will actually produce a QR code that you can associate any type of information you want. Job site info, safety, quality, company policy stuff before you walk on the job site. Somebody scans it and literally it brings the information right up on their phone. And maybe there's a 90 second video on the hazards of this specific job site. Now that's some wow. good, good training, right? Yeah, that's um, brilliant. Yeah, so that uh, anytime somebody's interacting with that information, uh, no matter how they got it through a multi-channel delivery, on their dashboard back at the company site, in the office, or wherever they happen to be, they're getting real-time information as to who has interacted with wit, with what safety training or critical on-the-job information. Right. And so, so people can be held accountable. And, and people know that people begin to understand the mm -hmm. team on the ground that they're getting held accountable. So they yeah. just do it because it's easy to do and get done. And that's what right. we want them to do. Yeah. And in a and much more manageable it, way. It's a much more manageable way. And then, of mm -hmm. course, you know, it's like any platform. There's alerts and notifications to help people keep on track with either their training or for a safety manager or supervisor to quickly identify who's not compliant on the job site and go find them. Uh, you know, we're talking a lot about safety and people not getting hurt, but there's also the concept of people don't want to hire you unless you have a low injury rating, right? Uh, they don't want to bring true. you on. They, I don't care how small the project is. They don't want to bring you onto their property if there's the potential of your historic history of having injured workers, right? Yeah, um, I've worked with several people who were very accident prone or injury prone, and it, you tend to not want to repeat that process after, you know, working with those people. So it, you have a very good point there. Yeah. And and so it's just a, a definite benefit for the contractor to dial in on their training program and their level of connection with their employees. Now, we also say as a side benefit is that this is a, is a great way for an employer to show how much they respect their team on the ground and how they're going to make it easy for them to interact with information and do a great job and feel good about it. And we right. all know that people stick with companies that they feel respected with. And boys, 100%. skilled tradesmen are hard to find, aren't they? So yeah, keep the best ones on your team. Yeah. And you know what? Every job site is different. So the fact that you can have a QR code that is customized to your job site so that when you walk up, you scan that code and then you get a custom video that's going to let you know all the safety hazards on a job site. I mean, that is, uh, that's worth yeah. its weight in gold. Yeah. The, the, actually, we launched the QR code at the beginning of 2020 and it's just skyrocketed. People are uh, putting them on ladders. They're putting them on trucks. And some of them just retrieve things like checklists before you drive this truck. Think about, is it snowy today? Is there black mm. ice today? You know, stuff like that. Just again, it's not even a training thing. It's just a think about these five things. Mm -hmm. um, and in the trades, like you said, you know, people, they're, they're very driven by, you know, okay, I got to finish this job. I, I've got, I don't have too much time. And it's a nice reminder to get people back into thinking, okay, I've got to do this safely. I've got to, yeah. I've got to get home to my family. Yeah. Uh, you want to go home in the same shape you went to work today, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now, we have some uh, safety fail photos that some fans sent in, and I wanted to take a look at them and see what you thought. Uh, okay. <laughs> These are always fun. So a uh, welder decides to use a beer bottle as sparks fly. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's the same as using a, a mask, right? Yeah. I mean, come on already. I, you know, it's just like literally, you know, this one is a little bit extreme, right? Uh, so this yeah. wasn't like, this wasn't like, hey, I don't have enough time to go find something. This was like, I'm going to use some beer bottle to do this. Yeah. Uh, and why is that beer bottle so close by anyway? That's what I want to know. That's, yeah, right. So there's two fouls. At least we can go down and create a big list. One, the bottle breaks or backlash and it hits you in the face. Two, why was the beer bottle so close drinking beer and using uh, hand tools, right? Yeah, and not a good combination. Not a good combination. Oh, this oh, is yeah. all. Literally, you could make a library out of these pictures, can't you, Michael? I mean. I, I've seen it in person. Like, and yeah. things like this, it's, it's unfortunate. And like I said, you know, I've been in the trades now for something like 16 years. It's been a while, but 
it's amazing how many people think, you know what? I don't want to get the scaffolding. I don't want to get the proper ladder for it. Can you just do this and we'll set this up? And and like you said, it's one of the number one uh, areas on a job site where people get injured. So we talk to a lot of people about stuff like this as well. So this is about planning, right? Because if they had a deadline or they were approaching the end of their day, people are going to do that. But if mm-hmm. they have, if they knew what was going to be required of them before they went to a job site or it could wait until tomorrow kind of the thing, then they could have the right equipment there to make sure they did the job safe. Yeah. And planning is so important. It's crucial. I mean, in any career, in any job, but you know, I, I'm speaking from personal experience, if you don't plan the job site out right, you're not going to get anything done. And then talk about safety issues. It, planning is very, it's crucial to a safe and productive job site. Mm-hmm. What do we have here now? Oh my. It oh, looks like he's... Out loud. <laughs> yeah, who needs a sawhorse, eh? Yeah, Just use this... his leg. I don't oh, even know how to God. comment on this one. I actually thought it was yeah. going leg already, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've rested a two by four on my foot or something, but like not put the blade anywhere near my foot. This looks like he's almost cutting over his leg. Yeah, it really does. I mean, and just like when your dad was cutting that piece of plywood uh, in that last video, and we've all seen the the saw jump. Uh, I mean, literally in a nanosecond, there is going to be a gash about how long, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, then you look at the glasses hanging from his uh, collar there. <laughs> oh, uh, there you go. oh, now there's uh, like... 20 things going wrong. <laughs> yeah, so those power lines, a ladder, he's got a leg stabilized. That yeah. is just like, that is, that's creativity. Uh, I like un- very unsafe. I like the uh, caption. It says accident waiting to happen. It's almost like the accident's already started. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Accident in motion, right? Yeah. Why not move, you know, some of that stuff on the bottom there so we can get the ladder closer up. You know what? I'll just get on the top and, and use my leg. Oh, wow. You know what always surprises me about these two is like, who's brave enough to go on that? <laughs> I, 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 I feel you because, I mean, like you're already up on a roof and now you want to climb yeah. on some scaffolding that's just thrown together. I mean, you know, yeah. that's another thing. Have a pro scaffolding company come in and do it for you because uh, that makes it way easier. I mean, I know I've set up enough scaffold in my life, but having a company coming in and doing it very safely, properly, where it's going to actually also not hurt the house yeah, is, right. uh, is, is very important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I think one important thing to think about, um, you know, when it comes to safety training and training in general is bringing on new apprentices or interns. So how do you train those? Yeah, this is a hot topic. Uh, we have an aging workforce that stayed in the workforce the longest in history ever, right? And we're going to see a lot of these folks start to retire. And we have to be thinking ahead about bringing a younger generation in. And you, and I know you and I both agree on this is that, you know, this is a great path for a lot of people. Uh, You know, not only can you make a great living at it, but you can be extremely proud of finished products and, and really have an awesome career. And so yeah. I really, I, I feel passionate about employers and being an employer who hires a lot of young people right out of college uh, to be part of our team, uh, to, to bring them into the fold. And it, I speak a lot on the topic of multi-generation knowledge transfer. I know we just recently collaborated on a uh, blog post yeah. uh, that uh, features some commentary from you and your dad. Um, and, and I love the video, by the way, in that blog post, uh, <laughs> the, uh, little family multi-generational fun, uh, for our yeah. listener here today, you should check out the video. If you haven't seen it yet, it's really kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but there is a process that people have to think through, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, think about it, you know, the first time your dad had you on a job site and he started telling you what to do. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe you were probably way younger than this, but I'm going to guess yeah. the first time you thought. Why is he always telling me we were probably about 16 or something like that? He was like, yeah, seriously, dad, you got to tell me everything to do. Well, it's the same thing at work for people who don't know each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And maybe even worse uh, to some extent, because there's no rapport, no relationship. So it's the accountability of the person that's leading a team. And I don't care if you're four people doing a home remodel or if you're a contractor with 30 to 50 people on a team working on a big project. 
-hmm. you're going to have multiple generations and you have to tee it up for success. Uh, we just recently wrote a uh, co-wrote a, a great article with um, uh, with the Holmes Group, and uh, it's up on our blog post, and it focuses in on some tactical things uh, that you can do to help that knowledge transfer between the generations. Yeah, there and there is a large knowledge transfer, and there's you know obviously ego is involved, and there's many different things that are involved. You know, there's on the one side, it's like you know I've been doing this for. 20 years, 40 years, 50 years. And then on the other side, there's new technology, new tools, uh, new ways to introduce to the trade. So um, th there's two sides to it. And I think they're like you're like you're saying, you know, there's uh, there's a lot to be learned about how to kind of meet in the middle. Yep, absolutely. And the companies that figure that out are going to end up snatching all the talent, the younger talent that's coming up and mm -hmm. they respect that talent. They're going to see that they have a, a long career and long longevity of employing with one just one employer and that's exactly to see right yeah absolutely so and is that now a good place for people to learn more about ving or to find ving is that your blog yeah that's a, you know predominantly uh people are always searching the internet for their solve ways to solve their problems right and yeah. so we get a lot of uh contractors a lot of home builders uh, a lot of uh, HVAC, roofing, you name it, uh, searching on, you know, a, the subject like, hey, how to train my new hires or my new apprentices or how to engage my leadership team in the safety culture. Right. Well, Tony, I know personally, I really enjoy working with Bing. Uh, I love how you're taking it from this, you know, uh, big task and, and making it a much more manageable thing to learn more about safety training, product training. So I think, you know, more people need to check out Bing and I encourage anyone watching this, go ahead to blog.vingapp.com and check them out and see what they have to offer because you're not going to be disappointed. Yep. Everybody's welcome. Please go and subscribe. Thanks, Mike.